Hey there, welcome to the first lecture of Calculus 1. Um, my name is Richard, and in this first lecture, I want to spend some time kind of motivating the subject of calculus, uh, go into some specific examples of capabilities that uh, calculus enables, uh, things that we can, could, can do in algebra and then kind of, con uh, kind of contrast that with the capabilities that calculus allows for. So I want to spend some time on that. And then after that, I want to spend some time kind of going through, um, just giving some detail about where the course is going and what uh, people who are intent on following the course should expect. So um, let's get started first with the preview of calculus, and then we'll jump into uh, a discussion about what to expect. So I'm just going to call this section 1.1, and I'm going to call it a preview of calculus. Okay. Um, so there are countless applications of calculus, um, and really, its its importance um, really cannot be overstated. So I mean, literally, like no matter what I said, I, there's no way I could overstate the importance of calculus to the to, to the rest of uh, mathematics and science in general. Um, what I want to do is just go through a couple of things, a couple of uh, examples of, of capabilities that uh, calculus enables. And so, so just a few, there's, as I say, there's countless examples, but let's talk, let's talk about just a few of them just to help motivate kind of uh, what, what we might expect from calculus one. So the first one I want to talk about is, well, let's start like by saying without calculus. Okay, so without calculus, we can talk about the value of a function f of x when x is equal to c, right? That's algebra, right? So we can talk about the, the value of a function f whenever x is c. So we can specifically, we can talk about f of c. Now with calculus, we're gonna get into this new idea uh, today, uh, tomorrow, uh, next video actually, um, and we'll be able to talk about the value of f of x when x approaches c. All right, so um, this is going to be the idea of a limit, and this, um, so visualize it like this, right, say I've got a xy coordinate system and I've got some arbitrary curve here. And let's say that the function is undefined at a particular value here, x equals c. <clears throat> now, without calculus, I can't talk about what, I can't tell you what f of c is. Right? It doesn't exist. Right? If the, if the function isn't defined at x equals c, then clearly I can't talk about what f of c is. With calculus, we'll be able to talk about the limit of f of x as x approaches c. Okay. So this is going to be the limit concept. And that'll actually be the first thing we jump into with calculus. It gives us a whole, a whole new way of thinking about functions, a whole new way of thinking about um, what happens to functions as we approach uh, you know, value, values on the x-axis, what happens to the value of the function. Um, and it enables obviously a lot of um, a lot of capabilities, and really most of uh, most of of calculus uh, is uh, underpinned by limits. So we'll get into that. That'll actually be the topic of our of our next couple of of lecture videos. So uh, another example, uh, with and without calculus example. So without calculus. We can talk about the slope of a line. Now with calculus, we can talk about the slope of a curve. Okay, so let's just make this a little more concrete here. So if I had, when I say line, I mean like a straight line, right? And we all know exactly how to identify the slope of a line. It's equal to the change in y 
divided by the change in x, right? And if I know those two values, which I could obviously do in the, this example, I can, de I can derive the slope of a line, if, of a straight line. And the slope of a line is constant, right? Because it's straight. Now, what if, I, what if instead I want to talk about a curved line like that, you know, a function that isn't uh, just a linear linear function, right? Something that has curvature like this. So what if I want to know specifically the slope of this curve at this exact point? Right? What, uh, how, how would I do that? Well, that's a subject that is handled early on in calculus. And so we'll be able to identify tangent lines and using the same similar kind of machinery as over here, we'll be able to figure out what the slope of a curve is. And then we'll actually go on to even, even greater heights. We'll be able to identify f entire functions that des describe the slope of uh, the curve of a line. So very powerful. Um, another example. Um, let's see here. So without calculus, and again, I'm skipping over lots and lots of great examples, but just in the interest of time, without calculus, we can talk about the area of a rectangle. Okay, so for example, um, you know, simple rectangle. All right, we all know how to calculate the area of a rectangle, a square, a handful of other uh, quadrilaterals, you know, we can talk about special figures, we can Id obviously identify the area of circles and, and uh, you know, um, other kinds of uh, polygons. But um, just in ge a general curve eludes us, right? But with calculus, this, this kind of gets busted wide open. So we, we can talk about the area under a curve. Right, so just in a general sense, like you can do things like this. Right, let's say I've got some function, right, in the xy plane here, and I'm interested in the area under that function between two values of x. Right, so it'd be x equals a and x equals b, okay, for example. So Without calculus, we're kind of we're kind of we're, we're we're sort of limited to rectilinear figures or special trapezoids or special polygons or circles or something or triangles. But with calculus, the concept of area gets greatly generalized, and we can do much more interesting things. Much more interesting things. Okay. Um, so as I said, there's lots and lots of examples. These are some of the, a few of the high points of calculus. And so specifically here, this capability is handled via the concept of a limit. Uh, this capability here is handled via the concept of differentiation. Okay, so differentiation and derivatives, right, you might have heard these terms. And down here, these, this, this uh, capability is enabled by integration, um, or you may have heard the term integrals, integrals. Okay, so those are really the three big topics of calculus, limits, derivatives, and integrals. Um, you know, and then a, obviously a smattering of other things as well, but those are kind of the biggest, uh, the biggest names in calculus. And so here are some examples of things that those capabilities enable us to do. Okay. Okay, so for people who are taking this class, um, who are, you know, uh, wondering a little bit about like what to expect, this is, this is going to be a full semester of calculus right equal to basically calculus one okay and so um what you should 
the way you should think about this is that this is literally uh, video lectures that I use uh, when teaching this material to college students. And there's no, there's no calculus one topic that is omitted, right? We cover everything that you would, everything that you would uh, encounter in a calculus one course, in a typical calculus one course is encounter, is dealt with in this, in this, uh, in this class. So um, it's a, it's, it's totally complete. This isn't abbreviated. This isn't like business calculus or something. This is full blown calculus one for mathematicians and scientists. Um, and so what are we going to be uh, tackling in calculus one? What's the typical subject matter for calculus ones? Calculus one, it, you can kind of break it down into uh, essentially three parts. So the first part is going to be, as I said earlier, just limits. All right, what is a limit? Uh, you know, what is a limit? That's a big question, right? So, how, how, what is this new way of thinking about functions that we call limits? Um, and then a lot of time spent on evaluating limits, like, like for given functions. How do I, how do I think about this? How do I evaluate? Um, well, how do I figure out what the limit is? That kind of stuff. We spend a little bit of time talking through, um, talking through formal definitions of a limit, epsilon delta definition of a limit, and a little, a few examples of proofs. Proofs are not the focus of calculus one. When you get through calculus, you take courses called real analysis where proving uh, theorems from calculus is, is the focus. This is more about understanding the concepts and getting into some of the applications. So we we'll start with limits, and I would guess we'll have at least four, maybe five full lectures on limits. Uh, maybe roughly a third of the class. And after that, part two of calculus one would be uh, derivatives and differentiation. Okay, so this this is going to be a an application of the limit idea, and uh, we will we will get into that. So we'll talk about what a derivative is, obviously define it, derive a bunch of derivatives, uh, and kind of doing it the hard way, hard way of deriving derivatives, identifying derivatives, and just basic differentiation. What does it mean? What is it doing? What are we doing when we're differentiating a function? And then after, after we kind of do all the hard stuff, we'll jump into, um, there's, there are fast ways to calculate derivatives, quick ways to, to com complete differentiation. And we'll, we'll spend a fair amount of time on that. So things like product rules, quotient rules, chain rules. These are names of, of uh, these are things that you'll, <laughs> you'll come to uh, understand uh, about midway through the course. Um, we'll talk about in, so a concept called implicit differentiation. We'll get into derivatives of inverse functions, and that'll be that'll be the main thrust thrust of uh, of differentiation and derivatives. So we'll spend about a third of the class there as well. And this is again di derivatives, differentiation. What are they? Some practice with it as well. And then part three, part the the third part and final part of the course is going to be uh, applications of derivatives, of which there are many, many derivatives. So we'll talk about um, extrema on an interval. We'll talk about what are, something called the first and second derivative test. We'll get into uh, curve sketching. Um, and then we'll spend a fair amount of time talking about related rates problems. These are more kind of a complex, more complex than you've probably ever seen uh, physics type problems that derivatives are are central to. Uh, and then we'll get into some some pretty cool optimization problems as well. So so that's the basic um, layout of of the course. And I'm expecting uh, some, somewhere roughly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, roughly about 20 lectures or so. And I would say the average length of the, of the lectures would be 90 minutes. So about somewhere between, somewhere around 30 hours worth of lectures should, um, 
should get us through the material of Calculus 1. Now, keep in mind, again, this is a full-length course, um, but a lot of time that is spent in a classroom setting is, is spent on assigning things and answering questions. So this is just 30 hours of pure lecture on the subject of Calculus. So um, I think with that, I will end uh, in this first uh, lecture video, and we will see you next time when we get into an introduction to limits. See you then.